And we are going to go over meiosis today. So remember, this is the type of cell division that makes reproductive cells, which we call either gametes or sex cells. So, meiosis makes gametes, which, as I said earlier, are reproductive cells or sex cells. Remember, they have half the number of chromosomes as regular cells. Since you're using these cells to make babies, you can only give half of your chromosomes to your baby. So in order to make these cells, we have got to take a diploid body cell and break it down into a haploid cell. So that when we make our baby, like down here, so here's the sperm and here's the egg, we get the correct number of chromosomes, and for humans, remember, that is 46. What's different about meiosis is that it occurs in two divisions. So that means that we're going to divide this cell two times. After the first division, we end up with two cells. So we take one cell and we split it into two. And then at the end of the second division, we take those two and we divide them into four. Remember that these cells are going to be produced in the reproductive organs. So for boys, that will be testes, and for girls, that will be ovaries. So meiosis occurs in reproductive organs. When you are making sperm, it's called spermatogenesis, and when you're making eggs, it's called oogenesis. Spermatogenesis is a very simple process. Remember, men make millions of sperm every day. You start with a diploid cell, which we call a germ cell. The cell has 46 chromosomes, just like any other body cell. We complete meiosis one, and we end up with two cells that have 23 chromosomes. But at this point, these 23 chromosomes are double chromosomes. So don't let these numbers confuse you. After meiosis one is finished, then we go ahead and do meiosis two, and we split each of these into two more cells, all having 23 chromosomes. But over here, we have single chromosomes. Oogenesis is a little bit different. So we do start in the same way with a diploid cell. Then that diploid cell undergoes meiosis one, same way. And what we're actually going to end up with is two cells that are haploid. Then we're going to complete meiosis two. And then what we end up with is polar bodies. Now, technically, this cell right here is a polar body as well. Uh, it's drawn big in this picture. Um, just don't let that confuse you. Remember, when the egg and sperm come together, the egg has all the nutrients for the growing baby. So that's why it gets more cytoplasm. So really, when eggs are made, we start with one cell and we end with only one egg. But we still did make four cells. These are just not, they're not viable. They're not going to be used for reproduction. And as it says over here, they just die. When meiosis begins, you, you go through interphase. And remember, that's when we go from having single chromosomes to double chromosomes. This is the single. This is the double. It's joined by the centromere here. And each arm of the double chromosome is called a chromatid. After interphase is over with, we roll into meiosis 1, which is prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1. And we are going to reduce our chromosome number by half. Prophase 1 is our most important phase. We have two big things going on here. One is that we have this thing calling synapsis, where our double chromosomes, remember this is the double from dad and this is the double from mom, they get beside each other and they form a tetrad. Remember, they're going to cross their legs and exchange some of their genes. This is just another diagram showing us what's going on with our chromosomes in prophase. Remember that these bands represent genes that are of the same type, so these chromosomes are homologous. Each little arm, remember, is called a chromatid, but the whole thing is still a chromosome. 
So after synapsis occurs, what we're going to do is cross over some of that information. So remember, these arms are going to link, and then they're going to exchange genes. Um, don't worry about this uh, chiasm thing down here. Don't let that bother you. But just as we said, they're going to cross their legs, and then they're going to swap some of their genes. So if this one originally came from mom and this one originally came from dad, you can see how we're going to just mix things up even more. So again, one more picture of that. Just crossing over is when the homologous chromosomes that are doubles, they exchange genes with each other. Now, when we finish up with all of this, remember, meiosis 1 is basically the um, same phases as mitosis. What we're trying to do here is to separate these tetrads. So here is metaphase 1. Our tetrads get on the equator. Remember, they line up two by two. Remember me talking about Noah's Ark and how the animals went on two by two. So what we've got here are our double chromosomes lining up in, same here, in anaphase one. What we're going to do is pull them apart, okay? This is just a fun little question that's built in, and it says how many different combinations of sperm could a human male produce? And remember, independent assortment just means that we've got a random mixing of these, of these chromosomes. And it's going to be about 8 million combinations. So that's, that's a lot. Anaphase 1, we're going to pull those homologous chromosomes apart. Then we roll into telophase 1, where we're going to divide this cell into two, still using cytokinesis. And what we get down here are two haploid cells, okay? So this is not a diploid set. I, I, I don't like that these are drawn the same size. In our diagrams, they were drawn smaller, but this, is, this chromosome is different from this one. So please don't let that uh, confuse you in any way. In meiosis two, what we're gonna do is take this cell that has two doubles and we're gonna separate it, or here, actually here, separate it into four singles. So we're not going to have interphase because we do not need to replicate DNA. We're going to do prophase 1 the same as we um, did before. Metaphase, uh, I should have said prophase 2, but you know what I'm talking about. Metaphase 2, we line them up in the middle. And notice that they're single file here. So this looks like mitosis. Anaphase 2, we pull the sister chromatids apart. And then in telophase two, we separate, we get four cells. We call those four cells gametes. So how many chromosomes do you think are going to be on each gamete that we make? So remember, we're making four. If we're looking at humans and you said 23, then you are correct. So here are four cells that we made down here at the bottom which are our gametes. Now, when we look at this whole process, remember sexual reproduction gives us a lot of variation, which is very good because organisms are born with different traits and characteristics. So, you know, just look at, look at your family, look around your classrooms. You know, we're all similar to each other. We have the same traits, but we don't look exactly alike. And so that's the variation. Some people may have better adaptations or traits than others, which gives them an advantage. I always think about height, I guess, because I'm not very tall. So think about all the people that are, you know, say in the NBA and they're born really tall. Well, that makes them, you know, really good at what they do. So that makes them such an, an amazing um, basketball player in addition to having, you know, really good muscles and a really good um, respiratory and cardiovascular system. So adaptations are going to lead us into natural selection, which is survival of the fittest. So when we look at variation, we said it came from three different places. So see if you can remember the three sources of genetic variation. And I hope you were thinking of crossing over. 
independent assortment, meaning they line they line up randomly. So, and then of course we have random fertilization because think back to the video I showed you where all the sperm are swimming towards the egg, and there were millions of sperm, but yet there was only one egg. So, the lucky one that got there first was the one that fertilized. Here's another question for you. So, say we have a cell that has 20 chromosomes as a diploid number. How many chromosomes would we have at the end of meiosis in our gamete? So if we started with 20 as our diploid number, what would our haploid number be? It would be 10. So I hope that you got that right. And so just remember that when we make gametes, we can only give half of our chromosomes to our baby. So when I, when I look at karyotypes like this, Remember that especially if you're looking at males, and so we said you can only give half of these chromosomes to the baby. So males are either going to put this X chromosome on a single sperm, or they're going to put a Y chromosome on the single sperm. So it's actually dad that determined whether or not you're a boy or a girl, okay? Because half of the sperm are going to have X's and the other half are going to have Y's. Here is a female karyotype, so here are the, the female chromosomes down here, so we have two X's, so every egg in, in the entire world, remember, is going to have an X chromosome on it, no matter what. This is showing us trisomy 21, which results from non-disjunction, so that is a term that you have to know, absolutely. And non-disjunction means that our chromosomes don't separate correctly because our spindle does not attach correctly at metaphase and our chromosomes are not torn apart equally. So we end up with an extra, which is trisomy. Sometimes we end up with not having enough and not having but one, which was monosomy. So this is trisomy with three. When we look at what happens next, of course the goal of reproduction is fertilization. And so when we put egg and sperm together, that's when we get a zygote, which is another term to know, which is our fertilized egg having those 46 chromosomes. So if a cell had 40 chromatids, now think about that, chromatid, at the beginning of meiosis, at its completion, produce cells having how many chromosomes? And in that case, it would be 10, okay? And here's why. If you've got 40 chromatids, all right, that's going to give you 20 chromosomes because a chromatid is half of a double chromosome, okay? So if we have 20 total chromosomes, then after meiosis, our gametes would only have 10. Now, I don't think you'll have a question like this on your test. That's kind of, that's a rather tricky question. Um, I'm not really that fond of it, but it does it does get you to thinking, and so you just got to make sure that you know the difference in those in those names. Okay, so that kind of wraps us up there with that. The last thing that we talked about was cell specialization, and when you look at specialized cells, you're looking at cells that are different. They have different um, jobs, and they also look different. So, for example. Think about some common cells that we have. So think about skin cells and muscle cells and nerve cells. All of those cells, all types, they all have 46 chromosomes. And they all have all of our DNA in them. So a skin cell contains our complete genetic makeup, and a muscle cell contains our complete genetic makeup, and a nerve cell contains our complete genetic makeup but they're different because of the genes that are being turned on and off in each. So in a skin cell, we have genes being used that are maybe not being used in a muscle or nerve cell. And that's because of something called the epigenome. We watched a video about this in class. There's a link to it in Canvas under um, January 16th if you or 15th if you want to go and look at it uh, again remember it was only a minute and a half but the epigenome consists of areas that either turn off genes by winding the chromosomes up tightly or winding the gene up tightly 
or unwinding it. And remember, when you unwind it, what you're allowing to happen is transcription because genes code for proteins. And when you wind it up, what you're shutting down is transcription. So just go back over your notes there. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Don't forget that there are a number of additional resources on the internet that you can use. Bozeman's biology page is a great source. I think he has a really good video for meiosis if you want to take a look at that. Or if you like the guy that talks really fast, Mr. You know, I call him Mr. Fast Talker. Um, his videos are on, a, on the Crash Course channel on YouTube, so you could, you could watch that as well. And then don't uh, forget to check out the games and flashcards and things like that that I have posted on your review page. So just let me know if I can help you. If you want to come see me before class, um, if you take your test tomorrow, come see me first thing in the morning. I'll be in Ms. Carpenter's room. Or if you're taking your test Friday, just come on to uh, my classroom when you get to school. Okay, so good luck. I'm looking forward to a lot of good grades on this test. And please make sure that your test prep is complete because people that do their test preps, I'm telling you, they always do better on their test. So good luck and I will see you soon.